Hello and welcome back to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing with our C Shack scene. I'll be going through a few more techniques and trying to do things in different ways so you can see the different workflows and different ways of doing things, always with the aim to improve and become more skilled as well as creating a fun outcome. So a few people have asked me about texturing, so we'll go to the shading tab up here, make sure we're in rendered mode at the top here, or you can press Z on your keyboard and you can go to all the modes there as well. I'm going to get rid of my side panel here with N and let's work on the flag. Someone was asking me about the flag. So to add a new material we press new in the shader tab here and the same things can be found over here in the material tab here. So let's give it a sort of bluey color. So we'd go to our base color here, give it a bluey color like that. But how do we get two materials on the same object? Well into edit mode and I can select faces with three on my keyboard or I can go to faces up here. We hold Alt left click on a line going across the loop we want. Now I can create a new material slot with the plus sign just there. So there's a new slot there and I need to put a new material in there. I could choose a material we've already got but I'm going to create a new one. That's the same as pressing new down here. And this one's going to be white so we've got it on white already. All I have to do now is press assign. And then I've got a blue and white stripe flag. So the same for the pot, a bit quicker this time, into the pot, and let's say I didn't want all this to be a stripe, I can just add a loop cut in here with Control R, and maybe scale it out just a touch so it matches in. And this time I want this pot to be the same as the flag, so I can find that material, there's the blue material, and it paints my whole pot. Let's select our faces again, three, Alt, left click to select a loop of faces, up to the top here, new material slot, and let's find our white material. I should name these materials really, being very slack. And there's my white material and press assign. And there we've got a pot that follows the color scheme of our flag. Well, you may be saying, but what if I don't want to create a new loop cut there? Well, that's a different way of texturing and I will be going through that in later series. But in this case, it's not adding many polygons, so I wouldn't worry too much about game optimization there. It's also worth noting for games that they do understand this sort of material ID system here. So you should be able to take this into a game engine and still have the material slots, but you may need to recreate the materials themselves. Someone was asking about the texture of the leaves. Let's go into object mode and pick a leaf. Zoom in on that with full stop or period key on my numpad. Remember you can alt middle click as well. And I've just remembered to put my screencast keys down there, so hopefully that will help. Let's create a new material. I'm gonna name this one actually, uh, green leaf. Give it a base color of something greeny and perhaps a touch darker somewhere around there. Not too distant from the sea, but a bit of green. Now someone was asking whether I would put subsurface scattering on my leaves. I don't really think that's necessary. It doesn't really add anything to low poly work, but be aware it's there. It's that sort of translucency that you get in things like leaves or skin, which allows the light to pass through and it scatters through the object and Eevee has the ability to fake that. Now in this sort of low poly case, I don't think it's worth doing that, but you can have a play with that if you like. But what I want to do is remind you about linking materials. So we can select all our leaves. I can probably get them from here and deselect my trunk. Select the leaf we want to copy from last by holding down shift and reselecting it, control L and link materials. Now, generally speaking, I don't like to keep it like this. I like to add a bit of variation. So let's grab one, create a new material based on the old material. So I can click new here and it keeps the settings. And now I can change the green slightly and copy that to a few more with the control L command. Now we've got a bit of variation and it looks more interesting. Other people were asking about the fish. How did I make them? So let's hide the C quickly with H, or you can use the collections up here to hide them. And move my cursor to somewhere around there. It's on the rock at the moment, but that'd be fine. I created an icosphere, so Shift A, icosphere. You can also go to the add menu up here. And let's just have a quick look at the icosphere settings. I've got subdivisions two on. One's probably a bit too small. Three's a bit too much, so two is probably a good size for our fish. So let's minimize that. I'll go into layout mode as well and then I can go full screen more easily. Full stop on my numpad to zoom in 
and let's make this a fair bit smaller. Now remember I'm scaling in object mode, let's move that out slightly, so that may affect things later on. So we need a fin at the back, shift right click to move our cursor into position, shift A to add mesh plane, so we take that in the X 90 degrees and scale it down. Full stop on my numpad once again. And let's just move that into position there. And this is going to be the tail. Into edit mode, a loop cut with control R and using your wheel, or apparently you can type in a number and you get the amount of loops you want. So control R and two. Someone put that in the comments the other day and I had no idea that was the case. So that's really handy. Double left click to set those, and we'll do a couple this way as well. And left click to set that into vertex mode, and we can just pull these around into position. And there we go, that's nice and simple. You can do this with less edges if you want it very low poly, so you don't have to subdivide this many times. But this will give me an opportunity to add variation to the fish. So let's go to proportional edit again. I'll select this edge loop this time down here with alt left click and grab it using my wheel to move them into position. So now he's swishing his tail. So all nice and simple so far. Might just move that one up a little bit. Back into object mode, shift right click and now we're going to place an eye. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. I just went with a very simple eye, shift A to add, and I chose an icosphere again. It's very big, so I'll just scale that down. And actually in this case, I think the icosphere is too detailed. So I'm going to undo that and undo that again. Shift A to add, mesh icosphere, and change it down to one. Then scale it down, and that's fine as a fish's eye. The reason I had to undo what I did is because as soon as you resize, you lose your options to change your mesh. So as soon as you add a mesh, you'll be able to change the properties, but as soon as you move it around or scale it, then you can't, and you're stuck with that, or you have to recreate it. So there's an eyeball. Let's move that across the other side. Shift D, drag, across to the other side. And it's all over the place at the moment. I should have dragged that in the Y axis, so I'll undo that. G then Y, and it should be more of a mirror, although I forgot to press the Shift D. So let's try that again. Shift D, Y. That's better. Finally got there. Now let's add a bit of colour. Off to the shading tab. Full stop on my numpad to zoom into my fish. Both these will want a black colour, so new. So let's call this black I. Change it to almost black. I don't usually go all the way to black. So if I want to increase the contrast of my image in post, so after I've made my render in something like Photoshop, then I've got that bit there to play with. But if it's fully black, it can't get any blacker. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense, but it's good practice not to go all the way to the black. So let's copy that texture to the other one with Control L. Remember to select the one you want to link from last. And let's make our goldfish, or whatever it is, orange. So new, I'm going to call this orange fish and give it a base color that's nice and orangey and quite bright. Link the material to the tail with control L and there we've got a fish. Okay, so let's bring back our C with alt H and we can see it's fairly dark in there. So what we might need to do is add a bit of an emission. So down here we've got the emission. So if I bring that up and I bring this to the orange we can get a tiny bit of brightness in there if we need to. I can also copy the color from there to there. You do lose your shadows a bit when you do that, so be careful. It might not be completely what you want. If you want to add a bit of variation to your goldfish, then I suggest changing the color slightly of the tail. So let's just quickly hide the C again to the tail, and I can create a new color based on this one just here put tail, and maybe I'll give that more of a ready. Alt H to bring back my C, and there's a bit more variation, and I think that can be a bit nicer. Now, ideally, you'd put that into a collection, and then you can copy that collection around. Even easier is to actually join it together, so I'll just hide the C once again. 
select the C and press H and I can select all these different objects that make up the fish and press Control J. Now we've got one object with lots of different textures for the different parts but we can easily duplicate that without too much hassle. Now if you're going to keep them identical you can press Alt D which is a linked duplicate. So anything I do to this one here that I copied from, let's go into edit mode. Can you see they've both gone into edit mode now? So this is Alt D, which is a linked duplicate. So if I change this one, it changes the other one as well. So if you do want them absolutely identical, then that's a good idea to do that. I'm going to undo those steps because I like to create a bit of variation using proportional editing. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but I like to give it that sort of character. And you can scatter these fish around the place now. Alt H to bring back the C. One other thing I want to mention, and someone else mentioned this as well, and I think it's a good point, is that the Bezier curves can seem quite complicated. So the curves for the washing line and the fishing rod. You can use a different type of curve. So let's go back to layout mode and let's use the tie for the boat as our example. I'll move the boat into position. So G, then Shift Z, so it doesn't move on the Z, and then rotate on the Z, so it's more like it's floating randomly. Then Shift, right click to move my cursor to here. So Shift A to add, and we've got another option which is NURBS curves. And you can see this NURBS curve here, and if I go into edit mode, you can see how I can modify that. So if I grab these points, I can move them around. And this one doesn't have handles, so it's a little bit easier to get to grips with. I've still got proportional edit on, I'll turn that off. But we can move our points into position by grabbing them like this. But you can see there's still slight difficulties here, and that's the way that NURBS just work. So our line is going across here, but it finishes here and here. So we have to stretch these quite far in order to pull the line across. And the same for this one. If you don't like all these arrows pointing around the place, I do believe you can go up to Viewport, Overlays. This should have all your overlays in. And yes, there's normals there, is it? Yes, and uh, handles with the Bezier curves, I suppose. But you can see this is similar in some ways that you still have to move these points in order to get the correct location. It's not as simple as having the vertices along the curve. Uh, just a quick reminder, in order to add depth, we go down to the bevel over here. So our object data menu just there, and let's put the bevel up to two centimeters. We can then sort of position our rope a little bit more. If you want to add a point, you can select two points here, right click subdivide, and then you've got another point in the middle and I can start positioning this where I need to. You can turn snapping on as well, it might help. And I could wrap this all the way around one of my objects. Let's quickly try that. So to there, E to extrude out, E to extrude out. So it's a touch easier, but it's not completely without its faults. I'll try turning snapping on, so I've got snapping to face so it should snap to the face, and that might be a bit easier. And then turn snapping off and just move them out slightly. In fact, I might grab them all and make sure I've got median point turned on, which is the middle point, and scale them all up. And it's sort of wrapping around like that. It's sort of working, isn't it? So it's taking a bit of fiddling about, but it is slowly getting there. I'm going to subdivide this point as well. Right click, subdivide. Oh, slowly getting there, aren't I? So that's NURBS curves. Now I prefer a Bezier curve because I find these a touch awkward to use, but I think it's important to show you the different ways of creating these things. Let's have a quick look how that looks. I mean, it looks quite nice, so that's working well. So that's another way of creating rope. And it's probably worth trying both so you can see which ones you're more comfortable with. So let's talk a bit about game optimization. Lots of people have been talking about that. So I'm going to hide the water with H and click on the rock. Now this rock is fairly high poly. 
So let's go into edit mode and down the bottom here, we've got edges and faces and this is 1,800 faces roughly. It's a little high for a game. It's not that bad really, but it's a little high. So we can optimize this a bit better. Into object mode, we can actually remesh it using different tools. So go over to the modifiers with the spanner here, or the wrench if you're American, add modifier, and the best one for the rock would be decimate. Decimate's very clever. You'll see instantly what it does, but your face count is here. And if you just bring the ratio down, you don't need to change any of the other things, but bring the ratio down and it creates a lower poly rock. So I've brought it down to 300 roughly. And that's quite nice. It's still working as a rock quite well, but we've reduced the faces drastically. And we can do the same for each of these rocks. And in many ways for these rocks, it would have been good to have linked duplicates. Then I would have only had to change one of them in order to change the others. So if I want to add a decimate modifier to this one, add modifier, decimate, let's bring the face count down from 100 to, and you just keep an eye on your rock over here until you think it's gone a bit too far. So somewhere around 48, and it's still keeping a good shape. I don't need to apply it, I can apply the decimate modifier, and if I export it, it will be applied. But for now I can keep that there, just in case I think actually I might have that a bit more detailed or a bit less. Now if I duplicate this with Alt D and Shift Z to keep it on the sand and then rotate it in the Z, anything I do to my decimate here will do it to both of them. So yes, I should have copied these with Alt D and that would have been more efficient. It does also speed up your render times as well when you're using linked duplicates instead of just straight duplicates. So that's Shift D and Alt D. You do also have that in the right click menu. So there's link duplicates and duplicates. So decimating is a good option for game optimization. Let's bring back the C with Alt H. Let's click on the C and see if we can get the same effects with the C. So at the moment it looks like this and it's fairly high poly I would say. Let's select all and see. So we've got 1300 faces. Can we reduce that? So back into object mode, add modifier, decimate, and let's see what we can do here. Now, can you see the artifacts coming in when I go to this point here? I'm just going to create a duplicate of this so you can see what's going on. So shift D and bring it over to the other side. And I'm going to apply the decimate so you can see what it's doing. So you can see that it's created these really long, thin triangles. And that creates that sort of distortion on the surface of your objects at times. When you've got long, thin triangles, that can cause problems. So there's only so far I could go with my decimate before that started happening. And you can see that my C has lost its bevel because the decimate didn't feel that that was useful enough. But you can see the sort of limitations you're going to have with that type of retopology. So I'll delete that and come back to my original, full stop to zoom in. And is there a point where it doesn't reduce it too much? Well, I can see the top changing there when I go down to 0.9 and I'm losing a few hundred faces. So maybe that would work, but I am losing my bevel as well. So I'm not so sure I like the decimate modifier on my C, so I may have to keep that high poly. And that's the sort of thing you'll need to test out to see whether that's going to work in your game or not. But remember that option's there. Now I think most other things you can work out how to model yourself. Some people have asked about animation, and if I think it's suitable I might try that. Other people have asked about a night scene which I have rendered, so I may talk through that. But those will probably be just extras that I'll add in if there's enough interest. So comment below if you want me to go through any of those things. Otherwise I hope this tutorial series has been helpful to you and that you've enjoyed it. So look out for more, and in the next series I'm thinking of doing hand painting techniques which will take these scenes to the next level. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.